we were always told as kids not to go beyond the blue line. I always wondered why. What is out there? What is beyond the blue line? And that became a fascination. Those first early dives I started doing was an amazing amount of creatures. These small, weird looking little snails, which I've worked out were nudibranchs. Seeing small octopus, flathead, flounder, all the things that we, you would see in uh, shops and markets that, that you could actually go and find in nature. Seeing them in the water was just amazing. Seeing the bright colours, how they moved, where they liked to live, their habitat, where they used to hide, what they would feed upon and how they would interact with other animals. So once I started developing my diving, I wanted to show everyone else what I was seeing. So I eventually got myself my own camera. When I first started uh, getting my photos out there, a lot of the locals were very skeptical, not knowing what they actually had um, and not knowing whether I was believable or not. An elderly gentleman came down and saw me at the jetty here after I'd taken some photos. He actually got quite cross and uh, told me off and told me, told me I was a liar and a charlatan for misleading the community on all these photos of amazing things. It became my passion then to teach the community about what they did actually have here and it's not just sand and seaweed. After about five years, I was down here diving again and the same gentleman came down and he asked if I remembered him. I said, yes, you had a go at me a while back. And he said, well, I'm here to apologize. I've been following you ever since and I've seen your photos of what you've done in the community and I'm now an advocate of yours and I wanna make sure that we're looking after everything we have here because I never knew we had it. I was told about the leafy sea dragon here at Tumby Bay Jetty and it was quite amusing. I thought, yes, I'll come down and, uh, and find one. I think I did about 10 or 12 dives before I found my first leafy sea dragon. They're a master of camouflage, but an absolutely amazing creature once you learn how to find them. The leafy sea dragon loves to live in, in long weed areas over reef structure where they can feed and be protected and hide uh, from predators in a, in a natural environment. I've identified about 35 different individuals here. Uh, they all have a different facial marking, which is a bit like our fingerprints. Every one of them is different. So when I document the leafies, I try and get a photo on the right hand side of their face so I could see every time which one I have seen. So on occasions, I bring people down here as a guide, showing them the local area. I love to try and teach people how to look after the area because we have such a fragile seabed it's about training people on how to see the leafies and how to look after the, the nature, natural area. On doing that, once we do see leafies, people are just like giddy school kids. They love it and can't wait to come back again. The local community has also got behind it and they make sure that people are doing things correctly. We even have our own diver's code of conduct here at Tumby Bay. The community's response to the marine life in the area has been outstanding since I've started diving here and to raise awareness about what they have here in their, in their town. What we have here in, in South Australia is all part of the Great Southern Reef. It's an amazing diverse area of fish life and corals and reef structure. It's, it's just brilliant. You've got to get out and see it because there's so much of it around and it's so complex and involved. A lot of people know about the Great Barrier Reef because it has been put out there. We need to get the Great Southern Reef put out, acknowledged by people of what we have and how we can look after it and enjoy it for millions of years to come. <laughs>